Hey guys, welcome to Jerry's Live. As always, I'm your host, Amy Gardner-Dean, and today's episode is JL141. We are doing beginning pouring painting. So like if you've never done it, or maybe you've done it, but you just want to see kind of the basics of how it works, this is the perfect episode for you. So um, if you're interested in seeing what any of these items are that we're going to be using, any of the colors we've got, any of the panels that we've got uh, that we're using for the show, you can go to the jerrysartorama.com website, type in the keyword JL141, and that will pull up the complete list of the products we're using for this today. Uh, so I think probably the best thing we could do is get started because this is fun to watch and it's pretty colors. So two of my favorite things, fun to watch, pretty colors. Um, so what we've got is we're going to be using uh, Lucas Acrylics Pouring Medium. So this, instead of having to, which I think we did on one of our shows before, Katie, right? That, was it the first year that we did it? I think it was the first episode. Oh, no, no, no. We did do a pouring thing the first episode. And we used, um, we used Liquitex at the time because that's what we had. But we did a 4th of July one where, remember, everybody got into pouring. Pouring Medium was oh, really yeah. hard to get. We came up with all sorts of formulations made from products that that we sell for alternatives to pouring medium. Well, this is why it's perfect for beginners. Instead of that, you just need this and some paint and some cups. So cups are probably what you need the most of. So, um, so this makes it easy for getting into it. You don't have to come up with all sorts of crazy formulations and if they're going to work right or not, depending on the percentages, it's all just right here. And because it's a Lucas product, you know that it's priced really well. It's a super great value. Um, and it even comes in, what, gallons now, Katie? Mm -hmm. So you can get a lot of it for an incredible deal. So Lucas Pouring Medium is what we'll be using for this today. Um, we are going to be using Lucas Krill Liquid Acrylic. Pouring works better the more fluid the acrylic is. It's not that you can't use things like heavier body paint. It's just that the mixing is going to take more time and you're going to need use, to use a higher percentage of that pouring medium to the actual paint, the heavier that body of the paint goes. Likewise, the other way, if it's a fluid acrylic that you're gonna use, then you have to use, you know, obviously very little of that with the fluid medium um, by comparison. So we've got all sorts of uh, Lucas colors, you want me to read the colors off real quick just for the people that are there, just so they don't have to switch over to the other thing. Um, I'm going to do three different groups of paintings today, and the last one's going to be three panels at once. I'm going to use the same colors, but I'm going to show you how you can get a whole lot of variation depending on the percentages that you dump in your cup. So we've got titanium white is going to go in all of those, but the colors are going to be for one of the paintings We've got um, a permanent yellow, light. We have vermilion deep. We've got Payne's gray. And we've got ultramarine deep for one of the works that we're going to do. For another one, we've got permanent green light, mauve, magenta red, and Naples yellow. So kind of some fun pastels that mix really nicely. Um, and then the last one that we're going to do with those three panels, or Katie's, and mine, and probably Amanda and Frida's favorite colors, and Patty's. Copper. Um, we are going to use a phthalo blue for that, so it gets kind of a nice deep rich color. Burnt sienna, burnt umber, sorry, there's like multiple languages, so I'm trying to find the English on them. Tablet. And a cobalt turquoise. So those are going to be the ones for the last pour that we're going to be doing. So. With these that we're going to do, the first one we're going to use one of the Da Vinci Fluid Art panels. It's got the raised lip, so it's super easy. You don't have to have a catch basin because you're just pouring it into here um, and stopping when it starts getting to the edge. So that will be the first one that we do so that Katie can move it out of the way. Then for the next one, we're going to be using just one of the Paramount 6x6 canvases. Um, that's, we are going to, oops, Katie and our, all her wily wisdom came up with a fantastic idea. We're going to use the Soho peel away, um, 
acrylic, the gray value butcher's trays because paint peels right off of it. So instead of having to have a cardboard box you keep putting plastic in or um, having to use like maybe turkey tins and throw them away because sometimes they get stuck in there and it's hard to get it out or you pull it out but it bends. This is ideal to reuse and reuse and reuse and reuse and super easy to carry and a very, a very generous lip. So nothing is gonna come pouring out. So we're going to use that with one of the six by six Paramount canvases. And then we're going to be using some of the new Da Vinci panels that have the two sides. One's got a little bit more textured side. The other has a super smooth adjusted side. So we'll be doing three of those five by seven panels with the last pour that we're gonna do. All right, and we've got those awesome little Soho trays for that because Katie thought of everything. Fantastic. And because it took me 20 minutes to scrub it off yesterday, I'm gonna wear gloves yeah. today. Uh, so let's get started. We'll do the one with the fluid art panel first, uh, just because that's kind of, if you've never done it, that's the easiest, it's the least messy, don't you feel like, guys, mm -hmm. of, of the three? Um, that's kind of uh, the biggest fail safe for, for trying this. So, yes, Frida. John Bat on YouTube was asking if you could use airbrush medium to thin a heavy body paint and then add pouring medium. Um, John, I don't know why that wouldn't work, but you could just do the percentages of, of this. Um, you know, this is easier because it's a little more viscous than like an airbrush medium is like adding water, essentially. Um, and it takes a lot of stirring and mixing to break down a heavy body paint with airbrush medium. So this would just be a little bit easier. You just reduce the, the use of the paint. I'll show you as we're mixing, John, kind of what the what kind of that fluid is that you're looking for, how fluid you're wanting it to be so that it levels nicely. Uh, we'll talk about that as we go. But although that would work, and, and you know what, man, it is absolutely worth, worth trying out things like that to see if maybe that saves you from using as much pouring medium. There's nothing wrong with it just when you do it, do it at a point where it's not something you necessarily want to keep in case something goes wrong. And maybe use a series one paint. Yeah. Yeah. Test it with color or colors you don't like, that you don't use. Those colors that you always have hanging around that you used about this much of. Ta-da! Pouring testing. All right. So first painting we're going to do, we're going to need four color cups. Well, five color cups with the white. So I'm going to go ahead and get these out. Um, now, one thing I've noticed with doing this, and it seems like it's the same with most brands, and because we've taken these and played with them some, I'm going to add slightly more pouring medium to the white. Titanium white tends to be kind of a heavier, for some reason, once you add pouring medium, more viscous. So with that, you'll notice I am adding a little bit more pouring medium than the others, being 50-50. Um, and the same for the metallics. Their metallics are super pigment packed. And um, when I was playing with them the other day and put in that 50 to 50, it was like it just made more of the same paint like this, which is awesome because metallics, you don't want to blow through them with doing this. So we definitely don't need to add as much. So I'll, I'll reiterate that again when we're doing the um, adding that metallic on. All right. So with this, I'm just going to put some of this medium in the cup and I add just a touch more for my white. Now, a lot of people that have seen videos that we've done or videos that other people do, they're always, and, and I understand because when you're, when you're pinching pennies, it does seem, you know, painful, almost downright offensive when there's a lot of excess and with pouring, it's just kind of the nature of the beast. So there's two things you, that you can do with that. With something like a fluid art panel, you can always have some little mini panels off to the side, ready to go, just sitting up on cups so that they don't, you don't, you want pouring, and we'll talk about that when we go to do the next ones. You don't want it to actually be flat because it will, the excess will pour over and stick to whatever it's flat on. So you always want to prop them up slightly. So you could take some really small little panels 
or little canvases or fun little items pouring I mean you can pour on anything that's plastic or panel or wood or whatever even plexi and you could have those there to do something with the extra in a tray that you've got when you've got stuff left over it's not something where oh my gosh now I'm just gonna have to you know throw this away because it's it's been a waste and especially even with the ones that we'll do in a few minutes that are in those trays Katie, you guys were saying that you took small canvases and just pressed them in the color that was the runoff mm -hmm. and got really cool, completely different looking stamps mm -hmm. where you could actually put them in the different colors that you like as they run off. Um, so there's all sorts of different things you can do with this. So I understand if you're like, you're using a lot and there's a lot of extra. For us to do a great demonstration, sometimes there has to be extra because we're live. We don't want to make not enough and then have issues when we're pouring. So I understand it's not that we're being, you know, flagrantly wasteful. It's just with demos, that's the nature of the beast. So. Yeah, we definitely used every last drop when we were practicing. Yes. Down to the reusing stuff on the edges of the, on, underneath it. Right, and especially if you're doing it on your own. And if you're doing it on your own, get used to working in different sizes of substrates. So after a couple pours, you know exactly how much you need. I mean, there's plenty of ways to cut the fat. That's very true. After you do it a couple times, you you, know what? you start to realize exactly how much you need. For this panel, I'm gonna use these brighter colors. I think that would look nice with the natural edge. All right, so I got my white in there. I'm not gonna mix it yet. I'm just going ahead and getting my paint prepped. here so you can see what's what as I go now this is something where you could mark the sides if you're really worried about kind of eyeballing it if everybody's got their strengths and weaknesses and if if you know eyeballing the amount of something is not your forte it's okay to use with these being kind of you know semi-opaque like this you can always just take a sharpie or something and just mark that edge so that it's easier to see when you're you know close to about half i'm one of those dash or dab kind of people so all right so with mixing a lot of people use really small like popsicle sticks i'm here to tell you that takes forever and um, you don't always get everything mixed in, especially if you're using something that's more viscous like a heavy body paint. And then you'll get those gloppy glumps, which is, in Amy land is a technical term. Um, these are nice and fat. It makes really short order of mixing. And you know what? I said I was going to wear gloves and then here I am not doing that. So you want that to be... See, that's... But, me nervous. <laughs> uh, well, I'm just showing that that's about the viscosity that you want. That may be slightly thicker. Thicker than that, you don't want it where it takes a minute for that drop to happen. That is not going to be as conducive when they're mixing together. You want everything to be about that same kind of viscosity. That's a good point to make, too. You want everything to be the same viscosity. Yes, because otherwise some things will dry faster and some things will dry slower. So it's it doesn't have to be absolute, like you don't need a scale you don't need to be out measuring it just use your kind of your eyes and some common sense with, with that if you need the the little marks on the side of the cup that's fine this is a good way to tell that's pretty darn similar isn't it and again with some of the pigments uh that's the paints like you know the titanium white titanium is, is just for some reason it's a weirdly a weird viscosity kind of versus other things which until you've gotten the thing out and you're stirring it you're like oh this feels different heavy pigment mm-hmm see that's doing pretty good and you can usually see especially if you use heavier body paint check the bottom of your cup um, you will have whiter areas if you've got, not gotten it mixed really well don't ask me how I know that All right. And this paint's got enough weight where it'll hold these, even though these are not quite half 
in the cup, they're not going to come flipping out unless you're not being careful. All right. It's the last one, our white. I can definitely feel more drag on that white, even though I did not use as much. So I may add just a touch more pouring medium. See how that's a little slower to drip off? Can you guys see that? Here we go. A little, yeah, there you go. See how that's slower? The other ones run a lot faster. That's much quicker off the, never thought you'd be evaluating paint for speed, but yet here you are. <laughs> I'm just adding a couple kind of quick squirts of that. That's better. You can feel the difference already. See that? It's a little slow, but not anywhere as it was. And I think that that's, that feels pretty good because we do want some of its natural weight to kind of go lower where some of this other stuff can kind of pop up. All right. So it looks like right there, if I mix right there, I'm going to do this so they can see me dumping it right here. Now with these, um, with the any panels, liquid panels or otherwise, if you don't want the sides or top to have that potentially splash on there, you can always tape these off. I like to take them and paint them after the fact, one of the colors of something that I've used because it just kind of ties in. Um, you could even stain them if you want and, and tape them off, but we're just leaving this as is. Splash might, you know, stain it or whatever, but you can paint over it with an opaque paint. So to me, that's not as kind of, this is kind of a spur of the moment kind of fun type of thing. All right, so we got our clear cup. Now, different pouring speeds and different heights are going to give you, you don't need to mix this up. You're not going to need to use with the Lucas. Now, other brands aren't the same, but with the Lucas, you don't have to put the oil in. You know how everybody uses treadmill lubricant or they use a silicon oil spray or drops to get those cool eyes that kind of come up. They look like cells um, under a microscope when you're in science class as a kid. You don't need that with this, but what you do need to do is learn a few very basic techniques, which is why this is basic pouring. So we're going to talk about this. I'm going to decide, you know, what I want my biggest kind of base color to be. I got a lot of yellow, so we're going with that. So kind of what I call a base color is what goes in all the way. Okay. So this is going to be, I am scraping all this out. That's going to be in there. All right. Then I'm going to take a couple of these other colors. So I've got my magenta. Can you see this, Katie, with the side view so they can see it pouring? So they'll understand what I'm talking about. Go okay. Coming. All right. So if I pour this low, it's going to watch the bottom of the cup. See how that sits more on top? See how that's sitting right kind of on the top? If I pour it high, watch what happens. See how that goes down and pushes the paint, the yellow around it? See how that's starting to mix the color right there? So I'm going to stop and keep some of this here. And different weights are going to do different things, but look at that in there. Can you guys see how it's already starting to get some cells developing? There's no, oh, this. Yeah. See how there's some cells starting to develop in there? There's no real way for me to turn it to see, but you can see some of the yellow in spots in there. Oh, yeah. Okay. Speaking of cells. Okay. Once you pour all this onto your substrate, are you going to need to torch it? Susan Zimmerman, when Susan Zimmerman was just asking. Unless you're like one of those pyro people, you do not have to torch. If you just like to, or you've seen everybody else do it, and you feel like you need to knock yourself out. It's not a necessity. What, what they're doing with that, in some cases, is kind of helping the heavier pigments fall to the bottom and lighter ones come up through those air bubbles as they pop. You can blow on it with your mouth. You don't want to use a hair dryer. I've had lots of people go, wow, ah, hair dryer. No, because that's like. I mean, you can make some cool techniques with a hair dryer. Yes, but it will move stuff, right? It will move stuff. Versus. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Total, totally different. So. Don't try it on a small painting. No, no, no. 
Uh, the other problem I've seen with a torch is if you're not extremely careful with it, you are drying the top yes. layer of the acrylic way too quickly. And I've seen that with a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. And that's where crazing and cracking come in, guys, where you see kind of those weird lines. Ooh, look how that, cool that is. See how that's sitting on top? That's pretty. Let me see if I can kind of... There we go, laying some more of that on top. All right, now white. White's gonna be very heavy, so we know that's gonna go down. Let's see if we can kinda use this to get some to sit on top. Because what I'm gonna do is we will just kinda pour the cup as we go, okay? I'm going to leave just a touch in here, so if I want to put a dot or two of some of a solid color, I've got that ability left. I really do like that green. Makes pretty colors. Stick a little pink on top. Okay. Are we ready? We're just going to pour. Like, it's the pouring part of the pouring painting. Are we're, you not, gonna... we're not gonna flip the cup. No, okay. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna dump. You guys ready? Look at that cool eye in the in the top of it. See how uh, neat that is? I it should be said too that the Lucas pouring some people are questioning the Lucas pouring medium. The part of the pouring medium, the reason you want it is to keep the colors separate so that you're not making mud in that cup. Right. It, they will mix some. I mean, you can see there's no there's no violet, and you can see it's made a nice violet with some of the colors, right? Um, we'll see what happens. I see the yellow, but it's at the bottom. It's coming. Oh, look how beautiful it is. All right. So now here comes the fun part that people are like, ah, ah. See all those cool cells happening? We got all those air bubbles as they pop. Hang on, don't move it on and zoom around. Okay. Over and see if they can. Okay, hold on, I'm gonna take some of this and put a little of this right here real quick, just so we've got the excess. All right, oh yeah, see, isn't that pretty? That's like the type of cells that you get with the silicon, but silicon is something, they don't know what the archivability is long-term, and the people that put up how you get rid of it archivally it just sounds like you're putting in five times the work that it took to do the pouring. And to me, sometimes a waste of time is just that. It's, it's a waste of time that you could be creating. All right, are we ready? Oh yeah, that's cool. Okay, so we've got a lot up here, so I'm gonna move this. I don't wanna get rid of that yellow, it's so pretty. But I know it's gonna move some. Okay, we're just kinda letting it creep down, but I'm being very cognizant of that bottom stuff on the left not starting to overflow. So as soon as this touches and hits that corner, I'm gonna, and and Lucas, the great, one of the great features of Lucas is it sets up pretty quickly. So this isn't something where you wanna sit and dilly-dally and do a bunch of lines across and all that. It's designed because what happens is you do pourings and you get these wonderful eyes and then you, you know, pouring paintings move and you come back the next day because you don't want to move it around and then all of a sudden what happened? They've all gone slop, flap into your pan and the stuff you were left with looks, all right, so let's kiss that end. I'll go this way. It's, it's the cool parts that you loved have drizzled off onto the inside of your pan and they're gone. Happens because it took so long to set up. So the beauty of this brand is that it starts setting up pretty quickly. Also make sure that your piece is absolutely level. Yes. yes. Because that happened to me one Thank time. You. And it was super cool and I came back the next morning and all the pretty stuff had dripped over the side. Yes. Also don't you think that kind of panel would help with that too? The what? Like that kind of panel helps it not run off as much. Um, oh no, I mean, it's not going to run off anywhere, but it, acrylic, all acrylic shrinks slightly. Yeah. So you do want to make sure that you pour enough in there where it's, where it's not overflowing, but it's not super shallow where it can tighten up a little bit, right? Yeah, the last one I did, the pretty part ran right off the edge, but with these raised edges, it, maybe it wouldn't have. Right. Yes. 
Okay, I just, I really like this green, so I'm just putting some big, fun blobs in there. How deep is the lip on that panel? I don't know. Like an eighth inch? Eighth inch? I, I, it's an eighth to a sixteenth. I'm not sure. Probably an eighth. I don't have that in front of me right here. It may say on the, I mean, it's going to say it on the website. Okay, so these are going to still change a little, but I want to just throw a couple of these on there because this is such a pretty color. Straight saturation. It's mixed, so you don't see it like you see a little bit in there, right? But look how cool and pretty and swirly that is. I've got just a tiny bit of yellow, so if I wanted to real quick just maybe... Maybe, oh no, I need a. If I wanted to put a couple just little drips. So, how long do you think well. it would be for this to be fully dry? Uh, these scale. have been setting up what by the next day, Katie? They've they're not fully dry yeah. like underneath, but, well, but the, they're. Um, the, these are the lip panels take yes. a little bit longer. Yes, the lip the, the lip panels do take longer. But Agreed. we've been able to touch and handle and pick up ones that we've done on other panels um, in less than twenty four hours. It dries very quickly. Yes. That also being said, it means you have a short working time with it. Yes. So if you're going to do what Amy's doing yes. right now, do it quick. Nope. That's <laughs> I'm I'm done because I don't want to. I don't want to risk it now. What I am going to do is I'm going to give it a couple taps. Well, you know what? Let me get rid of this stuff. Get the mess of stuff. And I'm going to give it a couple taps to get rid of, bring up any air bubbles that it's got. Kind of like a cake. Mm -hmm. When you want to get rid of those air bubbles. Now, something you can do if you really see that you've got a lot of it and you don't want to take, you don't have something sharp like a, you could use a really sharp pencil. You can use a, uh, like an exacto knife, whatever, and you can just pop those little bubbles. You can blow on it, or you can quick mist it with a spritzer. Uh, you just don't want to saturate it a lot because that can alter the finish, and it won't be as bright. And it may make some of these harder cells start to blend and mix too much because it's almost like because it's so fluid, it almost gives it a watercolor effect, which is great if that's what you want. If you want to keep the beauty of all this, you need to leave it as is. So we're gonna blow on it real quick. Hold on, Frida. I I mean, you can ask me the question while I'm blowing on it. I just, I'm not going to be able to answer it. Mary was asking, oh, is look. it possible to... See all the white that just popped up? What? Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Mary was asking, is it possible to pour paint directly from those bottles into your painting now? Or will that have a negative effect since okay. the paint already applied has medium in it? Okay, Mary... The way you could do it that way is if you take bottles like this and do half medium, half paint and already have them mixed up and then you can just add and do pouring whenever as you're doing it. But these are not, these are, these are, I'm going to take a paper towel and just put it next to this so you can see how thick this is squeezed right out of the container. See how that's got body to it? It's like mustard, right? It's the viscosity of squirting mustard on a hot dog. That's too thick. We've, we've taken that fluid acrylic and then we've blended it down even more fluid with that, um, with the pouring medium. So if you put this in, it's going to put big lumps and bumps in your artwork, which if that's what you want, again, great. This is gonna dry differently though than this because it's two different types of paint. So the best thing you can do, if that is something you want to do and add that, you can put that in, have it already mixed up in a bottle ready to go. And then when you're done with it, guess what? It's there for next time. That's kind of the nice thing about bottles like, like that. All right, Katie, I think that's good. All these little white cells that popped up were air bubbles, were just disturbing the surface a little where a air bubble was almost there. And it popped open and gave that pigment the ability to, to rise up through it. All right. Okay, we ready for the next one? You'll have to excuse Katie. She's going to walk in front of the camera for a second. And hopefully not kill it. Don't so, kill it. Don't kill it. Stop. How long right. do we let that sit and dry and cure before we varnish it? Um, With acrylics, regular acrylics, usually they say 72 hours. 
with that, I would say give it maybe a week to let it fully cure. Unless you're in a super humid area, if it feels super soft to the touch, like don't, don't, don't do this the next, like I wouldn't come in and do that tomorrow because you can leave a fingerprint in it. Very easily. Um, especially since it's been raining here. Um, and I've seen people come in and do that to work that I've had where they didn't know it. And for some reason, everybody is like a kid that got that impulse to touch. So let it sit for a couple days before you are really manipulating it and then let it dry that full week before you varnish it. And with these, spray varnish I think is the easiest, don't you Katie? Yes. Because even if it levels, you can still have brush strokes. This is very smooth and even. So spray varnish is kind of where, and you can alter the sheen with a spray varnish. Mm -hmm. If you want it to be more matte, you can use a matte spray varnish. If you want it to be really glossy, shiny, ta-da, or satin. I've also seen people do a resin over top of them. Oh yeah, that would be That's cool. beautiful. But that self levels so you don't have to worry about it. Well, and that would be nice because then if there are, if there's a little bit of maybe your um, table wasn't completely level and you didn't realize it, you can level it up first, put the resin on, and then the resin will be even. Nobody will be able to tell that under the piece that it's not. So, um, all right. So now we're going to go with the canvas. So let's take these colors away. Um, I'm going to put this up here like that so it's still kind of in that realm of where you had the uh, had it for above before. Now we're going to use um, our primary colors and our Payne's Gray with some white. Now with this, uh, vary the amount of what you maybe want to see more of. With Payne's Gray, it can overpower and get dark really fast with any gray or black. So unless you want it to be really dark, use smaller amounts of that, smaller percentages of your pour with that color. Um, and the same vice versa. If you want a lot of yellow, uh, or maybe even yellow and green, because that blue and yellow might mix, use a lot more of those and a lot less of your red, okay? So sometimes it's just in the experimenting. So it's something where it's not the worst to get a whole bunch of little panels or little canvases and try um, three together like we're going to do in a few minutes, and I'll explain to you how you can vary those and it'll make them look very different. Um, so... Now with this, there's something you can do with this if you don't want the sides to, like if you would like it to pour over and maybe some of it be plain, you can actually prime the sides in any of these colors. Um, if you want the painting to just be splashes and go across, like if I wanted the whole background and the sides of this yellow, I could do that and then just put some splashes of color across and leave some of the yellow areas. A wrapped gallery wrap canvas like this gives you a lot of different alternatives if you just don't want it to all look like pouring painting. Um, but we'll tilt it to see if we can't get it over the edge and then you can actually go back with a spoon and pour little bits of the different colors on to kind of make it match up. Hey Amy. Yes. BP is wondering if you pre-mix the pouring medium with the paint and you want to save it, will it form a scum? Or will it thicken or it, should you use it right away? It needs to be in a something with a tight fitting lid. Okay. Um, and if you can use smaller bottles for smaller amounts where there's not a whole bunch of air in the bottle, that's fine. But as long as you immediately, like when you mix that color, you immediately put what you want in a bottle to save off to the side, that's fine. If it's sitting here open for 10, 15, 20, 30, going on from their minutes, probably it's going to get thick and yucky. So, but there's a lot of pouring artists that already have all that stuff pre-mixed and then they just get it out to pour. It's, although it's, you know, a little time consuming at first, it's going to save time in the long run because you don't have all the setup time to get all your stuff out to do all that mixing. Um, which, you know, is some of the fun for me. Just, I, I enjoy that kind of weird zen of it, but it, it's a pain for people that don't enjoy this part. All right. So with this one, I want um, more white. And again, I'm using less white than the 50-50, just since it's a pretty heavy pigment. I like the blue. I think I want 
Do we want more red or yellow? Yep. Gonna do a little bit, huh? More yellow? I don't know. Ask Ben. More red or yellow? I mean, too, there's a little bit of a... Red. Red, okay. And here, you line those up so they can see what's, what's on here. Oh, if you put it in bottles, could you just shake to stir, or is that a bad idea? I would stir it first, yes. It could make bubbles. Again, that's a nice consistency. It takes a second, and then there's the drop. That's pretty perfect. You may have already answered this, but why can't water be used instead of pouring medium? Because that does not have any water, does has no resin in it. So if you just try to thin these and put it on there, it's just a big soupy mess. That would be like taking just straight fluid acrylic and expecting it to have the body, right, to be able to slowly spread and cover an item. This is, you know, this is the difference of, you know, how when you do... Um, old school jello or uh or um pudding remember the instant pudding how hard fast that gets like super thick if you don't do the instant pudding it's kind of thin and then hardens up it's the same kind of a concept only you're it's it's like trying to use the the cook and put in the fridge to thicken pudding for the instant pudding and then not being able to figure out why it's not working which only people my age or older are going to get because these people have never had to cook pudding, probably. Just saying. Do you know what pudding is? Yeah, I know what pudding is. <laughs> you guys are I'm just not an like, infant, Amy. So, so serious. Well, I don't know. It's it's not a hip dessert anymore. Got all the, you know, 19th I think layer it's cakes. I think say that if this crew looks serious, it's probably because we're splitting our attention uh, between trying yeah. to read. I know. It's, between talking and They were just like putting, that is the worst analogy ever. Okay, see so yeah, how the white, that's, that's good right there. And the blue clearly is fluid enough because it's everywhere. And a nice thing to do, I've got, got big crystal seal bags at your house they're perfect to protect your workspace because you can peel it right off the crystal seal bag but you can see through to your bottom workspace very easily because it's easier for us to line up stuff on this big cutting mat but then I can see through and it's not making it yucky okay here you do that so you guys can see nice thickness it's a little ropey that works there see how that starts to you can see like the lines of paint in it adding a lot of water breaks down the molecular bonds of the resin it makes it very weak it makes it not um, adhere to the canvas well you're you're kind of using something to thin it with the pouring medium so that it becomes fluid but you're not sacrificing it at the quality of your paint resin um, and the predictability of it actually sticking um, decently and being a strong film. And this is so strong, you can peel this up off this thing later. You can peel it up and it's these cool pieces. What do we do with those pieces that we had up here, Katie? Uh, it's so no, I'm looking for the colored pencil. Oh. This is how strong this stuff is. Oh, wow. You made a mask. See? Yeah, I know. It does look like a mask. Katie and I were it trying does. to figure figure out how we could put it on the Just punch some holes put it on the and guy. Some string in it. But that's that's how strong this is with that pouring medium in it, okay? Look at I can't tear it. So, if you did that with paint and water, obviously that would not work like that. All right. So, big cup so again, we're going to pour this in and vary the amount. Um, let's use, 
We got so much blue. Let's let's use the red for the base color. I'm gonna save just a little. I'm not gonna do that till the end because that's gonna make a lot of pinks and we want. See how that goes down and watch slower, slower, slower. See how that kind of sits on top. If I've got it slower and I'm not pouring from such a height. Rhiannon on YouTube uh -huh. was mentioning about your little mask there. Yeah. You could be a paint spill for Halloween. Yeah. That's... Just make a nice so it, big one. And so it would be that. like every day of my life, but Halloween. <laughs> that would be funny. See how that's making colors? You can see it starting to mix already. Okay. Stick some white in here. Oh, that's really cool. Coming up through the... Remember, the white's heavy, so it's going to go down. Let's get a little bit on the top here, so we'll get some lighter colors. Our gray. <coughs> now you can go across, and it will make some kind of interesting mixtures that who knows what that's going to end up like. More blue, Gonna just really dump it. All right, with this one, I'm not gonna do the flip cup. We'll do the flip cup with the little, little ones, you think, Katie? And I'll just pour it around the edges. So we've already got a color on the edge with some of this that we've got. Oh, sorry. Oh. Well, they'll, they'll see it in a minute. I'm gonna go ahead and do this. So we've got this out here because the edges are kind of always the hardest part to cover those corners. Then you don't have to lose as much of your cool integrity of your uh, of your um, design because you will lose kind of that initial you're like no no but I like that oh it's gone I mean, I could save this later and go back in and do it, but I kind of would rather just stick it on now. I'm going to take our white and do the edges in between. And again, I, I knew this seems like we're wasting paint. We, we, we have good access to it, and you can do stuff with it on your own. We're just making sure that you see enough to get these techniques. All right, now see the... Look how pretty that is. It doesn't want to focus on it because it's so close. I think you get the idea, but there's all sorts of cool stuff happening in there. Right, are we ready? Look at how it's almost like a red heart coming up through it. Now that's white, so we know that's covering. Let's, uh, Look at how much red is in there. I want a little bit more red in this. So I'm gonna kind of do that. And make sure I've got my corners covered. You still need some on this one, yeah. Yeah, I don't wanna, you know what, I'm gonna dump it to get it over there because I don't want it to be, well, I liked that yellow, but I don't think it's gonna. Now, if you had let those corners dry first and then come back and added the pouring medium, do you think it would have gone around? The dried paint since it's raised up if um you wouldn't want to do that because it's not going to flow well and then okay. you've got a raised weird raised texture over all of it see how it makes really you can see all those designs really off to the side i really hope my monitor is not as this isn't as dark as my monitor is making it look it's pretty dark <laughs> over here it's really light it's very like you can see the yellows really easily you can see the blues See how you can see that yellow pretty well? See, you guys can't see the nuances that I can see. I'm sorry. That's, uh, I wouldn't see it. You just never know because it, it comes in, up in the cup and it's it's variable to... It's also because we can see all the dark below it. Yes. There, that should bring some eyes up through it. See how those little white 
spots are starting to pop up. I'm gonna pour We've got a some viewers here in YouTube who are twitching a little at the amount of paint that they're seeing under the pan. But I think most of that is probably pouring medium, right? Yes, it's, I mean, because we're doing it 50-50, right? And like we said, you can already have little canvases or panels, take them, stamp them in there, right? And pull it up and have, um, let's see if I can do this with a popsicle stick. See how cool that is? So you can take a panel and just do that and, and it's like dip dyeing stuff or uh, doing marbling. You can use all sorts of, and, and it's starting to get really cool dots and stuff on it. It's, like we said, it's because every time you do different sizes and stuff, you're going to need different amounts. We work with so many vast sizes, it's hard to know what it is. And that's why there was the disclaimer at the beginning that, that we're not going about trying to waste paint. We're just trying to show you kind of what this can do. All right, let's do it in this red because it seems like the reds. Or will the yellow, the yellow will probably pick up better. No, that red's pretty bright. Let's do that. Just hold your hand under it so it doesn't trip on the new one. See? That was one little canvas. Imagine if I, I could probably do a whole ton of these. And you can reuse the skin. Yes. Mm. So see, creepy, but. see how blowing on it made those little, little, um, Kind of colors start to appear in the middle Ooh, this area pretty. it's gonna those eyes will get a little bit bigger and bigger and i could take that and i can kind of slide it around and make it change some but remember this stuff sets up pretty quick so you want to have those at the ready and be ready to go but now see how that little bit of movement see how much more you can see in that i'm gonna see about Rhiannon is asking how this would work on I'm not gonna pick it a up. ceramic oh, yeah, tile. If it were an unfinished rough tile. Even if it, were, if it were a finished tile, it's going to stick. You want it to pour all the way off the sides and then you want to seal it. However, this isn't going to be like waterproof, like a ceramic tile is going to be that's, that's sealed like for a bathroom or something. So it'd work great for being decorative. It's just not going to work for being like finished tile that you can then put in your backsplash in your bathroom or in your kitchen okay yes it just struck me it looks like jupiter it mm -hmm. does but see see how that a lot it looked so dark and me moving it just a little bit and blowing on it these were air holes that popped open with those different colors same with the white same with everything else and you guys can't see as easily as i can because the colors are much like the values are about 10 percent 15% lighter for me here than what I'm seeing on my screen in front of me. Yes, Amanda. Sorry. Um, Rhonda's wondering, so like right now I can see from my vantage point. Yes. It's got drips on the bottom of it. Yes. Do you usually go through with like the tongue can, depressor and scrape them off? You can, you can go like this and scrape off drips. You can go back and, um, and use an X-Acto knife after the fact if you want. Um, to just leave them be it's it's kind of whatever you want to do you just don't want to accidentally dump that because if you lean it one way or the other it's going to start moving again right and because it's going to start setting up here pretty shortly it may damage the the top you might get some kind of curling or valleys uh by moving it when you shouldn't okay katie you take the whole tray yes um i'm gonna put our cool popsicle stick right over here and we it's can look bookmark. at it tomorrow. Everything is a bookmark in Frida's world. I love the yellows down there. I'm really trying not to if twist it. Flat, I know. And it's more than three I inches know. long. It's a bookmark. <laughs> <laughs> Bonus points if it's got sticky stuff to keep it in the book. Okay. With this, Katie, you're gonna, I think you're going to have to probably come out. And I'm going to put them like this. And I'll put the other one next to it. Because I want them to be able to see with each of these cups, kind of what we're going to do. All right. Okay. So take the colors away that we are done with here. 
All right, now we're gonna kind of use our natural colors and these look really cool together because they look kind of like, um, like really striated turquoise or things like that, like natural stones. So I picked this color combination because when I used to do these and sell them in a little gallery, anytime I'd made those, they would go to hang them on the wall and people would be like, fine. And the Katie's my favorite colors for these little yeah. boring things. They're just, they work together so nicely. All right. All right, so pouring medium. I want a lot of the turquoise in this because I really like that turquoise. I'm gonna put in more medium and just a little bit of copper for the copper. White, we want a little more than the white. We don't need as much of the other ones, so I'm just gonna kinda get those ready and we're covering these three surfaces, all right? You need those paper towels. Huh? You need those paper I'm sorry. Towels. Just have them because at any know. moment this could go. It it really could. Listen, don't do this at your kitchen, I mean in your this living is the, room. Yeah. Oh my gosh, no. Don't ever you no, not on carpet. You'll have again falls under the don't ask Amy how, how she might know um <laughs> leather footstool so you see my couch huh it's your couch good morning oh my gosh yeah okay don't do it anywhere precious I should no say. oh Carol says move your glasses <laughs> my glasses oh, glasses yeah, about it. oh that's I, that's that's where i write it happens this it's always going to go on me that's that's the law of yeah but those are nice reading glasses okay so copper went in there let's see if well, we can pull that at out. least if this one spills it'll match your reading glasses right <laughs> yeah there might have been a method to the madness of that all right so let's get that out of there before we may need to read it in white. We'll see. We'll see. All right. So you saw the amount that blopped in with the copper. I'm trying to see if this will. See how there's nothing there and then all of a sudden this starts to show. It takes longer because it's very thick. Okay. Like, see? Takes me a little while to get this all mixed up nice. This while is... you're mixing. We have several people who are wondering if there is a way to fix them so you could use them as a backsplash. I feel like you could if you... Like what you would need to put over if them. If you did like a um, like bar top quality resin over them. You would have them. to do resin over it yeah. where it's sealed absolutely Completely permanently. Because yeah. the issue is if any moisture gets around the side of that, right. it's, it's going to be a nightmare. You're, you could have molding and mildewing and... And uh, it could lift. I mean, resin will seal most everything. You just need to get the art quality resin that's going to be durable enough, but that's going to not yellow because a lot of resins, um, industrial resins for that kind of thing will yellow. So do your research before you buy. All right, see how that's a lot better now? Let me give it one more pass. <clears throat> to make sure I've got all my little lumps and bumps. Okay, see that? All right, and I'll give that a stir before I pour it in there again. Let's see if our white got tainted with copper just before we <laughs> pour because I don't want. Uh, that's a good point to bring up too. You can mix colors when you're doing this. Yeah. But mix them when oh, you're yeah. creating them, not after you pour the media. No, no, no. It would be much easier to do it. Uh, I mean, not that you probably can't do that, but it's you're going to sit there and mix a lot yeah. longer. And then you might not be happy with the color you made, and then you can't add a whole bunch more right. because you've already got that to that, you know, percentage. Okay, that's good. See how nice that's... The white's good. Let's kind of keep it over here so we don't have any more of that crazy splashing. All right. Um, did I put paint? I don't remember. I think there's paint in all of these, isn't there? No. I think those are the only two because we had the 
great copper incident of 2020. All right. If not, I guess we're going to learn real quick, real quick if anything else got in it. Can we post pictures of this in Jerry's live once? Please. Um, I, I don't know why not. We'll see. It's just going to depend on schedules. We'll see if we can't try to get it. All right. mixing group aren't you mm -hmm. no that was splashed earlier it's oh. not the same not the same see this is a different color that was the ultramarine i think this is thalo so it's a little deeper yeah that was i'm surprised you guys didn't notice that right away that was the first group or second group okay Again, you really want to make sure those are pourable. And when you do that, you don't see any kind of, you'll be able to see kind of the cloudy striations of the pouring medium versus the color. And if you see any streaks with that, you want to keep going. Because, I mean, although it'll work and you, it, you'll be able to see the streaks when you do this. So, better to mix it, over mix it than under mix it. Did you say which side of the panels you were pouring on? Uh, I think. One of these is rougher and the rest are smooth, but it's not like rough, rough. It's just a, a medium okay. texture. I don't think it would matter necessarily. It might move a little slower on the rougher one. It's something you'd want to just play with and see. Try it size panels are perfect for this kind of stuff because you can get a, you know, a bunch of different little surfaces to try things on without investing in whole big panels for final artwork. <clears throat> okay, good texture. Last one. I want to make sure this turquoise is good and mixed. And before you pour them, will you turn that one with the two on it? Yes, I'll put the, so I'll put the cups where you can see it. So oh. you can go one, two, three, if I can see on the on screen. Oh, the three different cups that I'm pouring into? No, the three different panels. Oh, oh, line them up in a row? Okay, that's fine. Let's do that real quick, just so I don't forget. Why don't you go ahead and turn to that now, because I'm going to get ready to pour them in the cups, and you'll be able to see the I'm difference. Down and pour them ah. Here. Let's get this way. And go that way. There we go. Okay. Ooh, and then I just smooshed it. Okay. So I'm going to have three cups for these. One, two, three. <laughs> I can't get them. All right. Each one's going to have a little bit different. I'm going to need to move it over because I'm clearly in the way. Okay. So each one's gonna have a different like percentage of base color. One of these, I really like this color, so I'm gonna do a lot more of that with it. One of these, I'm gonna do more of the neutral tones. And one of these is going to be, uh, let's see, we'll do a little bit more white, I think. Okay. Do a lot more white. Okay. All right. So now I'm just going to start putting some of these in here. Some of it I want to mix, and some of it I do not want to mix. So I'm just going to do some higher, some lower. This does not have any of this in here put just a little in this one so it kind of shows through the cracks while you're mixing that um amy i can't i lost who actually asked it but somebody was asking about people who 
some people go by the theory that you need to cover the entire um, panel or whatever you're pouring onto first and then pour into wet paint. And some people don't. Do you have any, I don't, it's just. I kind of put it on and move it a little bit, like put it here and move it like another, like put it on one third, move it to the other third, just so that it's got a little bit of kind of like a slick part to move back fast against it. But I don't think it, that's something you could play with, but I don't, I don't know if it really necessarily. I think it's just personal preference. Yeah. Okay. So neither of these have white yet. I know this seems very, I, I, I'm keeping good records in my head. No, it doesn't look like that. Okay. Again, stirring this copper before I'm putting it in because I want it to be fresh stirred. <coughs> So it's nice and bright, so it hasn't separated since it's a heavier particle. One of our viewers on YouTube, Rosamund, came in after we got started. Does this particular pouring medium have any silicone or alcohol in it already? No, this does not have any of those things in it. It's just a straight pouring medium, but by altering kind of the high and the low of what you're doing and just how they've composed the medium itself, that's going to be where we're going to get our cells from. So that's a good question if you didn't see what was going on. All right, I'm going to move these so they're out of the way because I'm going to actually tilt these. And I feel like that could be messy. All right. Are we ready? Okay. So this one's our, more of our white one. So I'm going to flip that. I'm going to let it sit for just a minute. I'm going to push it and push it so it kind of greases the wheel, so to speak. You know what? I've got, I, before I pick that up, there's two cups on one of these. Not one, and that was not even. So I don't want that to all go running down the side. All right, are we ready? Okay, I'm going to tilt it one. I don't want to lose too much of that copper because that's really pretty. This is the one that had mostly white in it and look how it's mixed into a really pretty light blue. Mm, that copper though. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't want to lose a lot of that. So I'm just going to let that do that for a minute and we'll come back and we'll um, <laughs> Blow a little bit of air on it. Oh, that looks the fantastic. Part of this, it's stopping. Yes, yeah. because you will. You'll it. be like, oh, that's so pretty. Yeah, it just went away. Yeah, no. All right, this one is more of the burnt sienna base. Oh, and I squeezed it. Don't, squ don't squeeze it. All right, let's give it a minute to kind of come down. Just kind of grease in that, so it's a little more fluid. Are we ready? And this is the one that was more heavy on the dark blue? No, this was the burnt sienna base. I didn't ah. do any that were heavy on the dark blue. This is that reddish color there that you see. And it looks much darker for you guys. I wish it didn't because it's, it's mm. so lovely. I don't want to lose some of this, but we've got to get... Okay, I'm coming back to the first one because I see air bubbles. I'm a fan of the bent safety pin poker. Yes, bit. but look at but look at how yeah. all those little things all of a sudden popped up and through there. Like it's like a little galaxy right there. Alright, so we're gonna let the second one sit for just a minute. Actually, I'm gonna take a popsicle stick. The edges aren't quite all the way here, but I really am afraid of of um, tilting it. I don't want to lose too much of the design, so I'm gonna take this popsicle stick. Like a plastic spoon would be fantastic. Look at that coming up. I know, it's because I'm bumping it just that little bit. That's got white in it, right? So it's popping up through that. Okay. That 
White's always the wild card, I swear. Is, is some of this side, Katie, blank mm -hmm. out there? This side. Oh, yeah, both sides. You got a bunch on that. Uh, on the blue one? Yeah. Okay, is that one good? Mm. Ah. It's so pretty. Okay, yeah. let's, take, uh, let's take another one of these and we'll kind of fix this blue. This side? Okay. That middle one is just so rich looking. Okay. Is that good? A little more on that end. Now, obviously, if we weren't doing a show, I could walk around and fix this, but. You also need to do that to the other one. You got people over here refraining Ooh. from cursing at how cool it is. <laughs> is there anywhere else, Katie? Dude, the, this corner? Okay. Right, the right where you just Yep, walked. I just felt it. Okay. All right, yeah, look how pretty that is. Now I'm going to blow on this one and more light colors are going to pop up through because I see some air bubbles. Okay, now that'll continue to move for a few minutes. Let's do number three. Let's see, okay, so these are all the same colors. We use the exact same colors for these. Look how drastically different they are by altering the different amounts that go in each cup. Now it's something like this, since we already have those colors, if we wanted, we could go ahead and go around the corners with this, but I wanna pick this one up and move it. All right, so I'm gonna slide it. Slide it. Here we go. Now this one was the one that was heavy on the light blue, it's, which you do not really see quite yet. It looks like it's mixed some with the earth tones. This one I'm gonna, I'm gonna just push it to the edge so you can see how much of that you're gonna lose if you really mess with it. See, that's losing that really pretty line that was there. I'm gonna just touch that so, <coughs> and touch this with some of my hand just so I don't, is that side covered, Katie? Over by you? Yeah. Okay, so now I'm gonna go to this corner. Pretty good. Well, we've got these two corners that need to. Yeah, they got on this There, side. and then this side. Okay. Right there. I can just touch that because I got some on my glove. And that covers it, and then it kind of helps pull the weight down from the side. Now look at how different that one is. It's almost like a tiger eye or topaz, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Now see, all of a sudden there's some little gold bubbles that are coming up. It's hard to see because there's a shine right here. Um, but oh yeah, all of a sudden that lighter stuff is starting to show. And there's that, the, um, burnt sienna in there that that will get more brilliant as this dries because remember that medium's kind of cloud it cloudy in these right that's somewhat cloudy uh right now because it's not dry just like acrylics always get just that little bit brighter look how much this one's changed look at all, how big the uh, turquoise bits have gotten in there where you see them kind of bubbling up and through and then look at these have gotten really big haven't they none there's no silicon no silicon spray, no silicon <laughs> drops with this, and you're getting the types of results that people get where they're actually having to add that, which is potentially, who knows what it's gonna do uh, long term. So this is pretty much, you know, going from the beginning. Now, when we're putting all that stuff in the cup, a lot of people refer to that as a dirty pour because you're just dumping a bunch of stuff in together. It's kind of like the garbage pail of pouring because you don't know what you're gonna get. It's not to say that you can't lay layers out quickly and let them blend together and then, you know, lean it back and forth or wand across it. But I like this because this seems to produce the most reliable and variated um, cells with that type of a pour. I'm really surprised this one doesn't have more, but I kind of am glad it doesn't because I really like 
like the copper in it, you know? You want me to pull it down just a touch? Mm -hmm. If you can, you stuck it to your stick up there. Yeah, look how nice that is. I'm not gonna move that. And I see a big air bubble in that and I'm not gonna be able to get that with blowing on it because it's, there we go. Is there a way to not get the cells? Um, you could just pour it whole, pour whole colors and you know, line them up along each other where then they kind of flow into the edge. But that's something you'd have to experiment with, you know? I mean, this one barely doesn't have very many. So it's just kind of, it's up to you. And if you're, if you just pour them straight in, you don't do a lot of back and forth mixing. A lot of that aerates it and makes those colors move all inside that cup. Um, and then do this on the panel. Okay, so that's how you can do the exact same colors. You don't have to mix more than those six colors that we had, five colors with white, three different cups, variate the amount, and then you can get this. Now, you could have done this with two, three packs of panels and had enough paint to do six of them very easily with just those six little cups of paint with pouring medium. So it's super fun. Everybody's got non-artistic friends, much to the bane of our existence, but we all do, and that's okay. Um, this is a really fun thing to invite people over to do, have some wine, have some dinner, sit down. Nobody's going to feel like, oh my God, this is artistic and I'm going to die. It's, it's super easy to do. And most people have the best time. Um, and the nice thing about this medium, since it dries quick, they can come get it the next day. It's not something where when I used to teach a class, it was three or four days, especially during really rainy times before it was set up enough where somebody could come and move them. So it makes a big difference for that. Are there any last questions? The ladies, I know there's a, a delay. Yeah, everybody just, it went in awe. And... Yeah, it's, it's super fun. Um, can you just reiterate that they will get more matte if they dry? Okay. You can fix that. So, so the, the Lucas medium it, it produces a satin finish. Um, now that means it's not super high gloss. That means it's not matte, like, like, you know, where you don't have a little bit of shine. The beauty of any pouring medium, gloss matte or otherwise, is you can varnish it with whatever sheen that you want. The easiest way to varnish these is with a spray varnish because you can do a couple really light coats and it gives that kind of even glow of whatever you choose i to, to really see the beauty and the difference in all the cells i prefer a gloss um, but you know it's personal preference it's just to me it shows every little color nuance so you can alter sheen with that final varnish and not all acrylics are as glossy as others and different colors are going to have different amounts of gloss because you have to have different amounts of resin to make the paint so the kind of do all end all of evening that finish is a final varnish on it. Frida. Two things. Mm -hmm. Number one, Nikki on YouTube appreciates your efforts to show us how to be creative. So thank you for that. And number two, can you just real quickly before we go, remind people about the ratios of paint to medium? Okay. So with, we used L L Lucas, um, Lucas Krill liquid. It's a liquid acrylic paint. It's not fluid like golden where it's more like an ink. It's not heavy body like a heavy bodied acrylic. So with their paint, their ratio with this liquid is 50 to 50. Now you noticed as we talked, I variated that. The white is thicker um, just in mixing it and how that pigment breaks up. So I did more like two thirds pouring medium to a third of the white. With the copper, it was even less than that. So it's something where you want to mix a really small amount with, you know, pigments where there could be a questionable effect just to see how it goes. You can always add that little bit more medium or that little bit more paint to make it that kind of runniness that we were showing you on the stick. If you're using a heavy body, obviously you're going to have to use way more medium to the paint to mix it to get it thinner like that where it is pourable and you're not going to have lumps. 
Across the board though, with every color that you're mixing that you're going to put together, it needs to be that same body pigment dependent, okay? If you're using a super fluid acrylic, like a, like an acrylic ink or something uh, that's just thinner than even this liquid acrylic, then obviously you don't have to use as much medium to the fluid acrylic. Yes. And some people have been asking too if you can use other paints. The acrylic needs to go with the acrylic medium. Other paints like tempera or different no, kinds. No, of no, 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 no. Acrylic we, with acrylic. Yes, just just like. You know, it's one thing if you're doing something under it and then pouring something on it, but obviously this is going to cover it. So that's nothing but a waste of time. You can't put in other things with it because they're not formulated to go with it. This is where acrylic needs to be acrylic. Now, if you wanted to use this, do an uber cool background for an oil painting to die, you can go right over it because you know why? You don't have silicone oil in it that could damage your um, other medium that's going on top of it. Somebody on Facebook asked, said that they like to do that and I think it's the coolest it's sounding It's really idea. awesome. It's super duper awesome. Yes. All right. So do we have any other questions? Are we good? So lots of fun, bright, pretty colors, very creative. There's no right or wrong with this. Even Will could do it. It's just because Will walked up. I knew it would make him smile. Right. Exactly. Okay. Yeah, exactly. So thanks guys for tuning into this. This was beginning pouring painting JL 141. If you need to look up that, um, <coughs> just to see if like one of these colors you can't live without, pull that up on the website. That'll show you what the color names of everything was. Mo Mo yes, moth. that is the best. That's my favorite. Lucas, that and the copper and, and the turquoise. So, all right. Well, some of you guys got in on those 500 free samples of the Lucas 1862 oil paint. And this team worked really hard to get them into your hot little hands to have for next week. We are going to be talking about swatching oil paint, how to get new colors, how to work with them, how to see what they can do and what their performance is to know how to integrate it in with the other oil colors that you use. So we're going to be using that 1862. I actually pulled one of those uh, sets out. We're going to be using that to show you mixing and to try some different things. And we're going to have a whole bunch of swatches of all of Lucas so we can play with some of those colors together as people have questions. Okay. Um, it would be helpful if you've got um, an oil that's like a titanium white. It'd be helpful if you had a black. I'm going to, I used ivory black for the swatches. Um, that would be helpful. Also, if you've got some Gamsol or uh, Chelsea Classical Studio, um, the Lavender Essence, something that you can actually thin that oil out with because those are the things we're gonna do. We're gonna, we're gonna talk about how to make color swatches that help you best use them as a reference tool when you're painting to be able to have tacked on a wall or have somewhere safe where you can pull them out and go through it to see exactly what that color looks like dry, how it's thinned, how it's in mass tone, how it's uh, a shade and a tint, and we'll get more into that next week. Okay, so thanks for tuning in to the fun of beginner pouring painting. Take care. <laughs>